this is chapter three free range digital design foundation modeling and what we want to look at in this chapter is basically modeling um, most of our modeling in digital design it's, uh, starts with black box diagrams so bbds you see that forever black box diagrams so black box diagram is a type of model we'll look at other types of models in this chapter modern digital design once again has two main qualities it's it's modular and hierarchical so the modules are you know what we're interested in here typical digital design is a bunch of modules that are talking to each other hierarchical because I got this lower level modules here that are inside of a box I can take that box and put it in another design digital design is is primarily centered around models so what's a model a model is simply a description of something number one or number two a description of something in terms that highlights the relevant in information while hiding the, the less useful information so once again we have two descriptions there um, I think it looks like a hierarchical description for lack of better words other things to note about this is that when, when you're talking about modeling there's no absolute one correct model for anything uh, typically modeling is is contextual in nature and meaning that the best model uh, depends on the, the context you're working with but in the end the purpose of any model is to transfer information to the entity reading the model so that entity could either be a human or some type of machine like a computer or a software blah 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 or even a like an academic administrator so this is uh, the digital design model hierarchy uh, this was certainly not in the textbook but I found this slide from a long time ago I thought we'd look through it and I uh, I like going over this in class because it gives people an idea of fun stuff in digital design so the first question is what is this thing and typically people will say oh that's an electron well no that's not an electron that's a model of an electron digital design cer certainly is a form of electronics but we're not really interested so much in what the electrons are doing so we want it that's way too low level of a model here so we want to bump it up and the next thing we bump up to is this this little device here which is NP junction which everyone knows as a diode so this is actually two different models of a diode if you show this to anyone who knows what a diode is either of these would um, they would know what you're talking about typically this this model on the right here is what you find in a circuit Still too low level, we're not interested in that in digital design. Next thing, we bump up to this NPN device, which is bipolar junction transistor. It's our first transistor. Uh, once again, there's two different models of it. Well, they call it BJT, bipolar junction transistor. Anyway, there's two different models here. One is NPN and one is this particular device here. Everyone knows that as a transistor. So still too low a level. We're not interested in transistors. We want to keep bumping up here. We're keeping abstracting to a higher level to something that we can design efficiently with. These are just too low level models to make efficient digital designs. So this next device here is actually an inverter. So it's using two gates, which is some type of field effect transistor. And this is actually a CMOS inverter. Lots of stuff going on, this thing that we're really not interested in. Still kind of too low level of a model for us. But what we're gonna do is come over to this, these models here, and these are gates. This uh, device on the bottom, I don't think it's a gate, is an inverter. This uh, model right here is equivalent to this model. Uh, this is actually a bit of a higher level. Um, this is where we start working at in digital design. These are logic gates here. This is an inverter. You know more on that later so this is where we'll be working initially and then we'll quickly bump up to these models which is you don't really need to know what these are but these are black boxes filled with gates uh, so these black boxes do something kind of interesting here uh, no need to know about it but uh, typically we don't want to stay at this lower level of the gate gate level design we want to bump up to these higher level boxes and once again, these are modules. We'll be working with the foundation modules in these. And lastly here, um, I assemble all these amazing modules. And I make a, a, a CPU out of them. This is a very old diagram. This is actually Pentium 4, which was one of the first diagrams I drew in this thing many years ago, back when people still use Pentium 4. So this is just a, some type of 
CPU, we don't need to know that. So this is actually too high level. This is uh, where the levels we'll be working at in digital design. Primarily, we'll be working at, at these levels, but we typically have to back up to this gate level when we need to. So these are a bunch of dis different model types. You've seen a couple of these already. This is your typical black box model or black box diagram, BBD. These are just uh, circuit elements. You've seen those before. This is a gate as everyone knows and loves it. This is another way to model that gate. Now this is actually XNOR gate. Um, this is a little box that, that I wrote XNOR in. This is a hardware dis description language of a gate, HDL. Um, this happens to be VHDL and it happens to be describing a D flip-flop. You don't need to know that um, just in case later if you look at this. Okay, so this is a VHDL model of a D flip-flop and this is a, an equivalent written description of that D flip-flop. Okay, a bunch of words here. Certainly from one of these you can go back and forth if you know VHDL. Lastly here, this is a timing diagram. Typically timing diagrams can be used to model the operation of digital circuits also. Use them quite often, we'll be getting into that later. What we're going to be doing is modeling things, typically digital circuits, but whatever you want to model with black box diagrams. It's most basic form of modeling. Um, it's what's really nice about it, it works for many engineering fields, it just works for everything. And what's cool about it is generating a black box diagram is the first step in every design you do. Essentially that means what you're trying to do is establish the circuit's inputs uh, and outputs. Point being here is if you know nothing about the circuit or what you're trying to model, typically you can generate a fairly decent black box diagram. These are examples of black box diagrams, so many ways to draw them. So this top one. Um, what I'm interested in is in the inputs and outputs for this top level diagram here. So what I've done here is, is labeled inputs and labeled outputs. Certainly a way to do it, but not, not too many people do it that way. Uh, typically, as much as you can, you put the inputs on the left side and the outputs on the right side. This diagram is uh, essentially, you could argue that it's equivalent. Um, I've given names to the signals here and I'm using arrows. The arrows are going into this box, which indicates that they're inputs on the right side the arrows are going out of this box indicates their output and this is another type of model here where I've actually used the a name in and out on these signal names to indicate that the signals are inputs and outputs you see this often or sometimes it's not really a good idea to do this you want to avoid this confusing so this is an example of a hierarchical black box diagram so up top here we have two black box diagrams. I'm actually using the naming the input signals in and out, which you know I told you not to do, but tip, it, we'll do it for this example. And then I'm ap I'm using these two boxes, which are we'll consider them low level. I'm using them in this other design, which essentially it's going to be a high level design. So this my big box is the higher level. And inside this my big box is these uh, lower level modules. Two of them are up here. This Z box, I don't know where it is. I just made it up. Um, this is a valid model. Um, it's a real. It's questionable whether uh, these these signals on the left side or right side are actually inputs or outputs. Same as the signals on the right side. You know, this diagram provides me with some information but not much information. This is arguably an equivalent diagram where I'm using these G box and H box. I know from the way I listed them in the original diagram what's an input and what's an output. So I can actually figure out from the Z box that since the signal here, the C out, this is the C out. So this must be an input to the Z box. This uh, H box this is the C out for this signal right here. So that must be an input to, um, I don't really know if these are inputs or outputs. Um, this one, this G box is obviously an output because this G box is associated with this uh, C out signal up, up here. The uh, point being that here it is, these are hierarchical BBDs. They don't really do anything, but it's different level of information. Certainly this diagram on the right uh, here has a little bit more information maybe a little bit more useful in digital design i always have these rules that i make up and uh, it helps me get started in anything i do and um, if in doubt first law here if in doubt draw some black boxes um, if you don't know what you're doing 
um, just slapping down some black boxes generally might give you an idea of where to go always don't ever get stuck doing nothing plop down some black boxes if they're wrong you just erase them and start over and speaking of which if your design starts becoming kludgy or kind of just junky and you don't know where you're going on it toss it out start over you don't lose anything by starting over you might essentially starting over you leverage all that you learn from making the mistakes the first time a uh, third law here is keep in mind that digital design is it's not like a analog design when you're looking for the current going through a resistor and there's only one current there typically in digital design you have multiple solutions for problems so uh, keep that in mind um, there's no absolute one solution for problems there's solutions that are better than others based on different factors but there's no one absolute solution uh, fourth law here is the design process is inherently circular you're not going to start at the beginning and then end up at the end you're going to go through this you're going to make mistakes you're going to figure stuff out as you go along you're going to have to go back make corrections um, you know fix issues that come up as you learn more don't expect just to do it in one pass expect to make multiple passes and that's that's just the way it goes and that's the way you should design it and so once again don't get stuck on anything because you know you're going to probably have to go back and fix anything anyway and when you think you're done by all means you want to go back and look at the whole process over again.